I am Rebecca Mackay. I'm a writer. This is my dog Scout, who is not. And the reason I'm posting this video is that I'm the author of a novel called The Borrower. This book is about a librarian who is desperate to help a 10-year-old boy named Ian who his parents perceive to be gay, and they're treating him horribly as a result. And at the end of this novel, the librarian gives Ian a reading list that's intended to help him through the next eight to ten years of his life. And I've gotten several questions about what would be on that reading list if I were able to expand it beyond the two or three examples I give in the book. And I felt like this was the appropriate place to post my recommended reading because hopefully this can reach a few more people and maybe it will get people talking about their own recommendations for the books that would help a teenager or a young adult dealing with growing up a little bit different. And the things that we look for in books, the solace, the companionship, the reflection of self that we can find between the covers of a book are things that can save your life. This first book is actually not a recommendation. It is instead a sign of how far things have come. More than one adult over the age of 30 has told me that the moment they first self-identified as gay or bisexual was hiding in the stacks of a library with a dictionary looking up the meaning of the word gay and realizing that the words they were reading were what described them. The fact that you are able to watch this video on your computer, the fact that a lot of libraries now stack young adult novels and adult novels that deal with issues of gender and sexuality are such gifts. All of the things that we look for between the covers of a novel are there for you for the taking, even if you are the only person in your town dealing with the things you feel, and you're not. The first three things in the stack are young adult novels, although the rest are not. If you're lucky, they're available at your public library. If you're even luckier, they're available at your school library. But there are other ways to find them, too. This one is called Boy Meets Boy by David Levithan, and it's just a wonderful romance. This one is called Absolutely... No, it's not. This one is called Absolutely, Positively Not by David La Rochelle. And the great thing about this version, at least, is there is nothing on the back. No one will know what you're reading. And it's about a boy who's trying to convince everyone that he's not gay. And he is. This one is by the author Alex Sanchez. He's written a million books about gay teenage boys. And they are fun, fast reads, even if you're not much of a reader to begin with. The rest of this pile is for more advanced readers, maybe 15, 16, 17 years old. Maybe you're even in college or maybe you're an 11-year-old genius. This one is by the author Michael Shabon. It's called The Mysteries of Pittsburgh. This is a coming-of-age story of a young man right out of college realizing that he is bisexual. This one is called Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit. It's by Jeanette Winterson, who's a British writer. It's a dark and disturbing book about a girl being raised by really fundamentalist evangelical parents at the same time realizing that she's attracted to women, but it's beautiful. This one is by Jeffrey Eugenides. It's called Middlesex. It even won the Pulitzer Prize. It is about, ostensibly, a young girl growing up in Detroit. Turns out it's a young boy who has had a genetic disorder that has made him appear to everyone, doctors, parents, to be a girl. And as he hits adolescence, it becomes very clear to him, at least, that he is not a girl. This opens up anyone's eyes, I think, to the spectrum of gender that is out there that it's not as clear as male and female. Anyone dealing with issues of transgender can find a narrative here that they can relate to. This is by the author David Sedaris, who, in my opinion, is the funniest writer alive. The book that I wanted to show you is called Me Talk Pretty One Day, but my husband seems to have stolen it. This one is called Naked. All of his books are essays. A lot of them are about being gay. Some of them about his somewhat miserable childhood, but a lot of them are about his amazing adult life with his partner living in France, and he will make you laugh like nobody else. This is The Essential Dykes to Watch Out For, which is a collection of the comic strip of the same name by Alison Bechdel. Reading this collection, you will feel that you have an extended lesbian family going back from 1987 when the strip started to 2008, and along the way they take you through the politics, the feminism, the gay rights movement, it's beautiful, it's hilarious, and if you're living in a place where you feel like you don't know any other gay, bisexual people, you'll feel that you do by the time you finish reading this. And as you read more and more, you'll find novels that are not so much about the trials of growing up gay or about coming out, but about happy adult lives. This author, Stephen McCauley, wrote The Object of My Affection, which was made into a movie, 
And you'll find this whole canon of literature out there that speaks to you and to your life experience. Sometimes the only thing that will work for you in a certain moment is poetry. This is Adrian Rich, who writes heartbreaking sonnets. There's one of them in particular that's known as the floating sonnet because it doesn't have a number attached to it, and it is rather steamy. This is W.H. Auden, who was a 20th century poet, wrote about many different things, one of which was his own sexuality, and he was a gay man. Another of my favorites is A.E. Hausman. This is actually a picture of him. This is a play by Tom Stoppard called The Invention of Love. If you want to know some of the backstory to Hausman's life, this is a great play to read. It's a little dense, but it's fabulous. The story basically is he was in love for his whole life with his college friend, and it was unrequited. And the very famous poem to an athlete dying young is addressed to that man. He's also the person who wrote the poem called They're Putting Him in Prison for the Color of His Hair. And he wrote it at the time when they were sending Oscar Wilde to jail in England for sodomy. It is couched in metaphor, but is obviously um, the strongest stand that he felt he was able to take against the mistreatment of his friend at the time. Um, and finally, if you are living in a family or in a community where people are justifying homophobia based on one certain very narrow interpretation of religious text. I recommend that you actually read the book of Leviticus, which is where this one verse is found. It's the same place, coincidentally, where this one verse is found that they used to use to justify slavery um, into the 19th century. And like that verse, this verse is very small and is in the middle of a lot of other things that these same people who focus on it almost as if it were the most important tenet of modern religion, these other things they ignore. So for instance, um, you're not supposed to cut the hair on the sides of your face. If you sit on the same couch as a woman who has her period, you are supposed to be considered unclean for seven days and you must go bathe yourself immediately in the nearest river. You're not supposed to plant more than one type of crop in the same field. And you're not supposed to eat the fruit of any tree that is less than five years old, very important. Um, obviously, these same people who go around um, beating the drum against homosexuality are not following these same rules, which is really interesting. If you're really going to try to go around living your life according to these very minute and ancient laws, first of all, you're going to be too busy running around trying to find six-year-old fruit trees to have much of a dating life. But in addition, there are open accepting groups in every religion that will accept you for who you are. A good place to start looking for that is a group called Believe Out Loud, and they have a website that um, if you're in this kind of situation, you might find a really great resource. My point being to educate yourself. Knowledge, as always, being the best defense against the idiots of the world. Not only does it get better, the books even get better.